Hey, my name is Erin Stewart. I'm the founder of Scenic West Design. I'm so excited to check out Stitch, Google's new AI design tool that they just announced. Um, so I figured it'd be fun to record my first impressions and uh, share some thoughts on how I would actually use this as a product and design leader. Um, so let's dive right in. So um, here is the home screen for Stitch. Um, they call it that it's in beta. They have some examples and then kind of what I'd expect as my starting screen, some sample prompts, things like that. Um, let's go ahead and click into one. Um, so I thought it was kind of fun that they had this, like we do a lot of HR tech products. Obviously this is not what any of us would expect um, a, a final like HR product to look like these days. Um, these are, it's meant to be, it looks like an employee survey tool and we built tools like this. Um, so I thought that was really exciting that they showed a more like B2B use case. Um, and you can kind of see, which I realize this is blocking this, but um, you can see a little bit of the interaction here, um, but oversimplified, right? Um, so let's jump in to Quad and help generate a prompt that we can use for Stitch. So first I'm going to ask it to write a prompt for an AI prototyping tool that will create initial designs for, and we're going to do a time, time tracking tool that can replace Harvest. Um, it's a tool I've used for years and kind of always wanted something better, um, but it does the job and uh, more often than not, I uh, run into people that are still using the same thing, so have just left it in place for our team as we've grown. Um, I'm going to say our target audience is freelancers. That's how I started using Harvest, then grew into an agency owner, um, and that extension sort of naturally carried with me. So I think that's a good place to start in the market. A lot of people are freelancing right now as well. Um, and the app should include time tracking, weekly timesheets, project client management, and basic invoicing capabilities. I'm going to ask it to ask me questions to improve the prompt as well. So super simple to start just to kind of demonstrate. Obviously, you can create a lot of great templates to help ask for prompt to create a prompt. Um, there's a lot, so we could dive into that, obviously, and maybe that's good for another video, um, but for now, I just wanna get into Stitch quickly um, and test out its capabilities. So here I see it's giving some framing, core features that I requested. Um, I noticed it added in reporting analytics dashboard, fine, we'll leave that, not maybe bare minimum, like functionality, but let's see what Stitch can create. Um, and it calls out some details for target users. We'll say those are fine. Um, design requirements. Um, one thing I noticed that, that it's doing here is calling out a mobile first approach with a responsive desktop version. And in Stitch, um, I noticed that they have you pick mobile or uh, desktop on the first screen. So we'll test out how it handles responsive de designs. That's a, a big question for me since most of our work falls into that category. Um, basic design requirements. Um, interesting that it pulled out some user flow priorities. So if I was going to spend more time on this, I'd probably spend more time crafting the prompt input and really like almost a PRD for it. Um, I would also, um, I like using quad for user flow diagrams. So like I might actually generate that. Um, I don't know that that's something that Stitch would consume well, but um, just sort of like wrapping my head around everything and really doing due diligence there is going to give me a better prototype output. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about how we typically actually use these um, tools so far. Um, obviously the uh, features and capabilities are evolving so quickly, so we're staying up on that. So we can always ask ourselves like when and if we should use something in a project workflow um, to deliver more value to clients. But anyways, let's dive in. So it's asking me to, if I want to improve with a few different questions. So um, let's ask it to uh, please update the prompt to include um, visual design guidelines or we'll say requirements. I don't know if that matters, but uh, for supporting light and dark mode and use a, we'll say a trendy green color for the primary CTAs and other brand elements. Um, let's try also include a requirement to support integrating with bookkeeping tools for accounting and tax needs and um, you know QuickBooks would be one example there's certainly others um, there's some that are like more freelance popular I think um, but we'll leave it vague and see kind of what it says and really I'm incorporating that to kind of have a stretch goal in the UX um, since I think 
a lot of these tools, like it looks great when you have a super simple thing, but like the reality is none of us are probably in the business of just creating or vibe coding a, to do apps. Like there will be some of us that will create the new wave of those. Um, but you know, I think in the world of B2B SaaS and AI machine learning products um, for enterprise and, and businesses, uh, really like the value add that we bring to any team is going to be in the complexity of navigating requirements, product strategy, and executing a queer user experience for that, working iteratively with de um, development teams, things like that. Um, so, you know, I think I would emphasize that these tools don't replace that, um, but they do have a place in our workflow, especially when we're creating new products, when we are uh, helping a group of stakeholders um, or a product team mind meld around a potential concept idea or a validated idea. There's a lot of different places that these tools can help accelerate our workflows, but it doesn't necessarily mean we won't then jump into to Figma and do more substantial work there. Um, so here, uh, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but let's go ahead and grab this and just see how far it gets. Um, so there'd inherently be things that we would need to tweak in that, um, but that gives me more detail than just writing the first prompt that I had. Um, I'm going to leave the formatting as is. Hopefully that'll be okay. And we're going to say, let's start with mobile. Sure. Okay. So I'm going to hit generate and see what it does. So I can see here that it's thinking um, earlier when I was testing this out, I would occasionally get a message that was like basically check back later for my designs. It never actually took that long, which I thought was good. Um, but gave me that feedback if it's like, hey, it's working, but don't just sit here kind of thing. I, I appreciated that. Um, I like that it starts showing, okay, I'm like generating multiple screens and I'm really curious to see what it does at the first pass. Okay, so, so far I see it's generated two of the screens. It's got um, a timesheet screen clients um, and I'd say my first impression of the time sheet screen is like that's not really what I would have had in my mind um, so maybe we can um, spend a minute editing that that's like a summary view um, but even like the way I would scan that isn't like totally idea ideal um, list of clients sure um, you know obviously the next question is like okay well what metadata um, the nice thing here is like it's like okay that's probably not my final screen for a list of clients but it does help me say okay like what did I forget to clarify also I didn't spend any time creating a wireframe like this to go have that conversation. So we're obviously big on providing visuals for teams to align around and understand sort of path forward or what our like known open questions are, or the gaps we need to solve in terms of requirements. Um, so what one of the ways that we use these tools is that. So it's how do we jumpstart a conversation without having to go spend hours on wireframes so that our, our time spent with teams is really around that like high value, critical thinking, product strategy, UX strategy, and of course UX UI design execution, collaborating with dev teams, et cetera. Um, so I think that what we'll see is the tooling will evolve. And I think you'll see um, maybe teams like skew towards where you have more senior people in roles. Um, I've always been an advocate for like smaller teams or startups, um, a hybrid like product and UX role. Um, I've come from that background. I kind of early in my career, like bounce between roles, sometimes played both in one, or like within a company would start in one role, jump to the other as they were growing, things like that. Um, so I've built our team kind of with that background where um, anyone who's a design lead also comes from either a product or an um, front end engineering background, if not both at some point in their career. Um, so really that value add there is around team process management, critical thinking, et cetera. Um, and so they like, can't stress that enough that like, it doesn't replace design, um, but it will shift how we're able to work and get more done with less resources, which I, like, I'm always for um, and is exciting. So let's look at what else they created. So um, this one honestly is a little underwhelming to me. Um, I, I had it create something different this morning, um, kind of mirroring like a loose like type of product we build a lot of. Um, and it did a little bit better because some of the views were like, you know, there are nice like list views of things where like an image plus metadata, like it makes you feel like you got farther um, into something, even though it really didn't answer any of like the hard details of like, okay, well, what API integrations do I need? Things like that. Um, so like, let's just talk through these screens, right? So today it looks like I have what maybe is like a home screen, but I don't see any navigation. So that's problematic to me. I have add time. I can, um, go in hit it looks like record for a specific task um 
I'd want better content in this if I were to show it. I also like this screen isn't usable to me. Um, and it's like the thing I could sketch out in, I don't know, five minutes for that screen would be better than this. So like I've already spent enough time to get to this and it not be usable that like there's definitely limitations, right? Um, obviously there's an argument for like the prompt could be better and it probably isn't that great, but um, for something such a basic app, I'd expect it to be able to do like one step better. Um, Time sheets here, like like I mentioned, um, this isn't quite the visual I'd expect. Um, the way it's presented um, doesn't really give me a good sense of like the day by day breakout or like a toggled view, things like that. So, um, pretty far off from like what I would expect from a Harvest competitor. Um, clients, list of clients, again, like obviously there's like metadata to sort out, but like. Um, the idea of like seeing, okay, I have time. Oh, and it's interesting. There's no nav here. There's nav here, but without the labels, then I get into labels. So like little things like that. Oh, and like this one shows different navigation. Hmm, interesting. Um, those are all easy things to clean up. Like it's, I think still just the idea of like, okay, these are all the skeleton of the screens. And then from there, I would, I would honestly probably not use these in a workshop with anybody, but I might say, okay, um, let me build out my requirements gathering exercise. Let me build out my user flows. Let me think through um, what screens are going to have the most complexity and how do I strategize um, serving those needs while keeping a dev team unblocked. So maybe there's some basic functionality, the app skeleton, things like that we can build sooner. Um, but like a lot of that, again, product strategy, roadmap planning, thinking, um, this can help jumpstart that, but it's kind of like feels like a tool I would use maybe sparingly or maybe not in place of other ones so far. Um, invoices, so like again, this is very basic, so I'd be able to click in to see an invoice didn't include that screen, that's fine. Um, but like, I think there's a theme here where it's like, I'm not getting any of the details, so I'd have to like really work with, with this to one, update each of these screens and then go one step deeper. Um, and then at some point there's like diminishing return on using the AI tool where, um, you know, I or my team could go through and do these faster, right? Like we're obviously, we have a lot of design systems, component libraries, and other accelerators that do design work very quickly to, in terms of going from blank piece of paper or blank Figma canvas to um, something that you can talk about with a team and then work on iteratively. Um, it does an okay, let's move this out of the way a little. So summary, like hours, earnings, hours tracked, like that's kind of what I'd expect, that's fine. Um, I don't like the list view of the client breakdown, it's mobile, so like, I mean, those would all be things that could be iterated. Detailed, uninvoiced, interesting, again, like this is where I'd like give it much better requirements to ask it, but um, this is okay, and I think like screens like this um, would be where there's been a learning curve or an evolution on what's possible in AI tools. I was just hoping some of like the list views looked a little better. Um, and then integrations at least gives it a nod to that. I'm not clear on where, I guess here settings would be where I would have gotten to that. But again, like the, even the nav isn't <laughs> consistent across them. Um, but same thing here, like really this wouldn't be a screen we would use for building out. There would have been a conversation with a client about strategy for this. What's requirement, what's a requirement for like the next release or the first release of something where we headed eventually and what does that look like um if we're going to build integrations the hard work is about setting up the integration the list view is, is something that like a designer can qu create very quickly and it would look a lot better than this but is this functional yes but it's it doesn't answer any of the the details for me um so let's see i also noticed it does not did i include it did not pick up my green requirement but it does have an edit theme it also has a toggle here for light and dark. I was hoping to see it hint at that in the UI. Um, so yeah, we could obviously go on and like iterate through this, these screens. So um, something that obviously we will all continue to play with, but let me pause and see if I can get this into Figma one second. So, well, here I'll show the starting point. So I want to take all of these to Figma, but it looks like I might not be able to, but yeah, let's look at maybe this one since it's the most complex. Um, and it says it's copied to the quick word, paste it into Figma, sure. Okay, so I'm gonna pause real quick and pull up a Figma file. Okay, so I just opened up a blank Figma file. I'm gonna paste in, I've got this. Um, we're gonna look at, um, so it's got one, 
Okay, so this would be like, you know, I don't, when these, if we think of these as wireframes, I don't know that it really matters how the layers are grouped or anything like that. Um, it looks like it, what it does have, it's got, so grouping, I'm gonna move things around is pretty slick. So it's got auto layout, which is good. Um, move things around, no problem. Um, so yeah, not bad overall. Um, things like if I were to be pushing this towards a prototype, I would be going in, I'd be fixing the nav, I'd be applying branding, um, and then working through for like screens like, um, you know, some of these where it's like there's, well, or even like this, I'd probably like, I would trash this one and redo this quickly. Um, I would fix some of the UI here. But um, it does give me a skeleton to talk to teams about. Now, I think where the limitation here is like, how much effort do you have to put in? Or can you use an AI prototyping tool like this one to get to a prototype that I can put in front of users to validate? So um, we love things like, I think, a rapid design sprint where you go from an idea with a team to a clickable prototype and a small batch of user testing with that prototype. Um, and in a matter of you know two weeks, you can have a really good sense of like what assumptions are correct, where do I have a, more open questions, um, what are we excited about as a team in terms of feature set, user flow, things like that, what do we maybe have a couple degrees off based on that snapshot of feedback. And it helps us chart a course in terms of product strategy, the amount of investment we wanna put into discovery before we build, um, and, and validation of course before we build, uh, and so on. Um, so again, I think tools like this, they are fun to play with. Um, they're great for like early day brainstorming about an idea. Um, obviously we're gonna see tons of people uh, doing the vibe coding thing and I think, and creating really more advanced workflows that do leverage these tools. I think um, Stitch Review 1, I'll definitely keep an eye on just cause it's out being put out by Google. But um, so far I feel like there's other tools that are better than this, um, but really excited to see where they head next.